About one in 200 people in the general population will be affected by either Crohn's or colitis. So to put that in perspective, that's six times as common as multiple sclerosis and about as common as rheumatoid arthritis. I'm Simon Garley, a gastroenterologist here at St. Vincent's. I lead the inflammatory bowel disease unit. IBD or inflammatory uh, bowel disease, they're a group of two conditions, so there's Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and these are both conditions where people develop sores or ulcers throughout the gastrointestinal tract. These are chronic lifelong conditions, they go through different periods of being active or in uh, remission, and there are longer term consequences to these diseases if they're not controlled, including you know, needing surgery. So the, the, often they're confused together, IBS and IBD, but irritable bowel syndrome compared to inflammatory bowel disease is a condition of how the gut works and that may be related to food intake or uh, different stressors where uh, patients are feeling symptoms of bloating or diarrhea or constipation. But examining the bowel internally, either at colonoscopy or on blood tests, it all looks normal, so it's more of a problem of function without the same consequences down the track. There are a variety of symptoms that people can present with, with uh, Crohn's and uh, colitis, depending on which part of the gastrointestinal tract is affected. So that could be diarrhea, including bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, weight loss, but also other general symptoms. So fatigue, poor sleep, arthritis of the joints, for example. While we think about these diseases being gut diseases, they're more than that. They are whole body conditions or systemic conditions. We do know that a small part of it is genetic predisposition that probably only accounts for 20 to 30% of the cause, but there's a huge you know, environmental component which we're still trying to get our heads around in terms of what is it in Western lifestyle that has led to the increase in, in IBD in the last 50 years. Both Crohn's and colitis can have really such a significant impact on an individual's day-to-day -day life. Having you know, the daily pain or diarrhea that's constantly got them worrying where the closest toilet is, how many stops they need to plan on the way to work on the train, or simply not being able to go uh, to work. So not just in terms of work life, but personal relationships, sexual relationships. So many different aspects of life are impacted when you've got active, um, and especially not well-controlled, inflammatory bowel disease. There are then the longer term impacts, increasing the bowel cancer risk if disease has been poorly controlled over many, many years, and the risk of surgery, I guess, being uh, perhaps one of the biggest impact. And that could mean needing to remove the large bowel and removing small bowel and, and potentially living with a stoma bag. So the treatments for IBD have really revolutionised care. It's probably one of the most exciting things for me as a, as a clinician. And each year we're having you know, one to two new options becoming available. Here at St Vincent's we've been involved in a, in a range of trials looking at new treatments and new ways of treating uh, both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So these range from big multinational trials, but as well as our own um, local initiatives uh, and perhaps the biggest trials of these were ones looking at faecal transplants and this is taking a healthy donor's stool, reprocessing it and giving it back to a patient with ulcerative colitis. 